it's so good to be with you. I'm so <laughs> excited to have this conversation. So we'll jump right in. And I know you're, you're, you got a baby growing in you. So, you know, I know I don't want oh, to. Oh, um, thank you so much. Like, it's so good to see you. It just, it takes me straight back to that place. And just, it was such a good moment meeting you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so why don't we start out by, why don't you share like a little bit about how you found yourself on this journey? Right. I think f for me, I have to take you back to 2013 when um, I was working as a lawyer in London. I was working long hours, but my career was going really well. And out of the blue, my uh, mother had a sudden brain hemorrhage just before Christmas. And she was um, on life support for about four months before she finally passed. And in hindsight now, I kind of feel like everything sort of relates back to that. <laughs> but at the time, uh, my husband and I, we decided to have, you know, I think we must have realized the toll it had taken on us. And we had a real reset and we moved to Dublin, Ireland we uh, <laughs> quit our jobs we bought a house and renovated it um so it was all very positive and um, so we started trying to conceive got married started trying to conceive and in the beginning we were really relaxed and if anything i think i was obsessed with not being obsessed <laughs> because <laughs> you see so many people tell you the worst thing you can do is think about it just let it happen so sort of a year went by and uh I was doing a creative writing master's so it wasn't the sort of the focus of our lives but in a way uh I feel that wasn't the right thing for us anyway because by the time it became apparent that there was a problem. This serious amount of dirty doubt had sort of crept in of why is this not happening? I suddenly it was like, it's been a year and not an inkling of a pregnancy test, you know, a positive pregnancy test. Um, so that was the beginning. Went to the GP, general practitioner, and she just did some basic blood tests and I really wasn't expecting I'm very healthy I've always I've never had any health problems and I just remember I got this panicked phone call voicemail from her and she said my AMH was really low um, and that I had an underactive thyroid um, so it was kind of it went from nothing relaxed to p being a patient urgency medicalization <laughs> panic <laughs> so it, yeah to, to get our heads around that but at the same time they were kind of like well we'll just put you on thyroid medication and keep trying and it was unexplained infertility uh, we were referred to a fertility clinic and they did all the tests so my husband and I and nothing came back so they said well there's nothing no reason why you can't conceive just keep trying as as you are uh, but that doubt was there then you know and <laughs> yes I know <laughs> <laughs> I mean that unexplained infertility is a label isn't it and it it was so hard when month on month went by and just nothing happened and there's no explanation you feel entirely helpless and passive and that which is totally not yeah. who you are as a lawyer <laughs> no right like <laughs> like out of control passive like that's that goes against every fiber of your being and your training exactly and then I think I was put, we were both putting on this brave face where we were like oh we're relaxed we're relaxed <laughs> and all our friends were getting pregnant my brother had a baby and um but it by doing that I was denying the real pain that I was going through and not acknowledging that um th those thoughts you know you could call them jealousy 
I refused to admit that. And the comparison with others, it was a real dark place where you're not only feeling those things, but you're not letting yourself feel them and you're beating yourself up and you're bullying yourself for feeling them. So Secular, you're just, isn't it? yeah, you're just in such a dark place and it creeps so gradually. You sort of fall down this hole before you realize of no faith in your own body, no, <laughs> not, not being authentic with your own desires. So one of my big issues was, uh, I think I felt so much gratitude for the life I'd built with my husband in Ireland. We had this beautiful home. We'd got a puppy and, you know, I had, I love, I'd married the love of my life and, um, I'd sort of escaped a job that was killing me in London. So sort of, I had a lot of things that people would, would love to have. And it felt almost like asking for too much, you know, was I, was I, <laughs> was I, you know, being greedy by wanting a baby as well. Uh, so there's all these dark thoughts and you don't even realize that you are on, you are, you are starting thought patterns that are, negative and limiting until you're quite far down the road I think uh, so all that came to a point where we did started IVF in 2019 and that was was really just a horrible year because because it was unexplained they sort of said um, well you're still young and uh, they gave us the percentage rates you know and they were high and it was sort of like, well, this will work. This is the magic pill. And of course, like what I know now, there's, <laughs> I was, you know, I was, um, I had so much trauma from what had gone on that I needed to work through. And uh, so we did um, several rounds of IVF and they were canceled, trans canceled cycles and, um, thin uterine lining and um, I ended up after one transfer getting pregnant which was the first pregnancy test I'd ever positive pregnancy test I'd ever had and it was sort of bittersweet because uh, they as they said congratulations you're pregnant but you're going to miscarry you know they knew they knew the numbers from so uh, we didn't miscarried about six seven weeks for that one and that just was a confirmation of all this my body's broken like they don't know what's wrong something's not right um and it really became I was just so emotionally depleted uh I felt like I was I was completely under the control of the doctors I wasn't doing anything from my with my own agency you know if they said take this pill do this take you know uh, I didn't, and, I, and it all goes back to not trying not to be obsessed. <laughs> but you think by the time you get to IVF, you should probably be getting a bit obsessed. <laughs> so uh, I, we reached a breaking point at the end of that year uh, when we'd had another cancelled cycle and we took ourselves off to the Seychelles and really called a halt and we said, look, how do we how do we find ourselves again without giving up on this dream because we're not giving up like we we want to be parents and we believe that that's in our future but how do we get there without <laughs> killing ourselves um <laughs> it's the big question uh, and that's when i found your podcast i was on i was in the airport on the way to the Seychelles and I discovered your podcast and by the time I got to the Seychelles like 12 hours later I'd binged <laughs> about 10 episodes you know <laughs> inhaled it that makes me laugh I hear from women all the time oh my gosh I was doing xyz when I found you you are the first sister on the way to the Seychelles <laughs> uh, so it was a good moment <laughs> Yeah. Well, so let's talk about that. Like, tell me a little bit about like what caught your attention about this whole mindset thing. There must've been something that kept you listening 
on a flight mm-hmm. to the, one of the most gorgeous places in the world. <laughs> like what, what sparked your attention and like, what made you start to wonder about this whole mindset thing? I think the way that you were unapologetic about saying hell yes, I don't know if it's because of my English roots, but there was something that I, the whole way through, and at this point we'd been sort of, it was three years in sort of thing. And I was so embarrassed by the fact that we had, the lengths that we'd had to go and the efforts we'd made and, I could see it in my friends, my family's faces, you know, they, I'd lost myself a little bit along the way. I was constantly swinging between wanting to burst into tears and just being very fragile to sort of self-denial, like everything's fine, you know, and part of that, I think now looking back was because I didn't think I could just say this is the most important thing in my life right now. I really, really believe that being a mother is in my future and I want to make that happen. Instead, I was all sort of like, oh, maybe it'll happen and, uh, you know, really apologetic. Um, and so listening to your podcast, it was just, <laughs> it was so far away from that. And it just gave me permission to say, no, it's time to get obsessed, get smart, cover your bases. You have permission to dig in and, and there's strategy there as well. It's not just, um, being a passenger and letting things happen to me. It's saying taking back control, but at the same time, surrendering control over things that you can't control. Like the timeline was a big thing for me. I suddenly, listening to these podcasts, I suddenly realized the timeline, I had to grieve the the kind of, um, the the vision I'd had. It's an imagined reality really of getting pregnant easily and straight away. Like I still believed that that was gonna happen. Each month I think was a trauma because each month, because it was unexplained, it was like, maybe this month, maybe that month. And, And I listened to your podcast, I just had to say, no, okay, I'm on this journey. I am on a healing journey and I have to embrace that and accept and accept it. <laughs> uh, it's just, I mean, it sa- sounds so simple to say out loud. Uh, it gave me permission to forgive the health choices I'd made in the past and being on the pill for that long and all the things that you torture yourself, you agonize about if only we'd done this sooner or we should have done that or we should have done this and it was a reset it's a complete reset button uh so so then I read your book (laughs) and then I (laughs) then I knew I had to talk to you (laughs) well so okay Kate because like let's let's take this from the top so you're you're trying for three years you address the thyroid issue you're you you're being diagnosed with low amh you've had repeated rounds of ivf canceled cycles miscarriage all of these things like what made you say i have failed all of these times but i'm willing to try this because there's this crazy american woman like shouting at me you know over these podcasts (laughs) you know like what made you say fuck all of that like i'm gonna give this a shot like because it's really easy when we faced a lot of failure to not want to try one more thing Mm -hmm. so what was that with you like what was that for you um i think the first thing was i remember your phrase um come out the closet as a woman who wants a baby (laughs) So <laughs> that was that was absolutely key. And then there was um the the bumper squad. So I think um uh, my mother had been a, a doctor and I think I had this sort of reverence for the medical profession. And I still think they are 
incredible at what they do, but that's the key thing, what they do. They, they don't do everything. And I certainly wasn't covering my bases by just listening to my consultant. And so, so in terms of failure, really, um, I was only at the beginning of the road. I suddenly listened to your podcast, was like, it, I haven't even begun to, uh, to, to embrace all the possibility on this journey. Uh, so once I, we got back to the state from the Seychelles, I um, said, look, to, to my husband and I sort of had a chat and, you know, they've just given you thyroid medication for this thyroid, but, but why, why is it underactive? What is the cause of that? And then like, doctors couldn't give me an answer. Oh, it's just, you know, you're something you have to live with that's not really good enough and I was like fine Roseanne says you know they do their bit go to them for what they do and go to a specialist and a professional for everything else you need so I then found a functional nutritionist and did a raft of tests to kind of dig in and explain the unexplained and she found she found answers and it was incredible because uh you I almost thought like it would have been a miracle if I had got pregnant like previously <laughs> with and, and uh you know there was for me working with you there was a lot of uh forgiveness uh for my uh, my forgiving myself my body um, and perhaps even my mother for for dying on me and causing a lot of stress and trauma um so it turned out for the functional nutritionist that I had my underactive thyroid was autoimmune, uh, which the doctors hadn't actually said. And there was a huge amount of inflammation and high antibodies. And so we just started working on it. We, we, I worked on my gut health. Um, we, I started taking uh, specific supplements and reducing uh, stress in my life in a sort of really active way uh, I remember you saying like it's okay to be unproductive which for a sort of type a <laughs> lawyer <laughs> it's just um, completely not how we normally live our lives you know but it was making an active choice to slow down um, and and those antibodies you could see in the bloods, they just went down and down and down. And I mean, so <laughs> the next round of IVF I did, which was when I was working with you, it's the first one I'd, I'd got four um, eggs collected. The second one I got 19, you know, the last one I got 19. And I remember you, <laughs> it's just, it, so, so there's a, a counter intuitive element that I was more fertile two years later than I was, you know, two years earlier, um, because I was nurturing myself, I was looking after my body, and I'd always been healthy, but it was a sort of different type of, of nurturing. Uh, and so that, so I was taking care of the physical, and the physiological, and then I realized I, that would take me to a certain point, but there'd been so much trauma and pain that I'd got into these negative thought patterns that I needed extra support so that's when we started doing the calls and they were a game changer I know well you know it's so funny when I when you just what you were sharing was this four eggs you start doing all of this work you I mean because think about the mindset shift you had to have had in order to say, especially with the upbringing that you had with a mother as a physician, you know, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, good leader, highly educated, you know, this is the world that you live in. And you were able to see that two things could be true at the same time. You can have, you know, like the, the, the physical and the physiological, the medical aspect of it, but there was a part of you that clearly said, hey, this is some, but this is not all. I want to cover all of my bases. I'm gonna look at this mind thing because you, I mean, something very dramatic happened for you 
in order to go from four eggs to fricking 19 and to see that direct result of taking care of yourself at a higher level with the, the antibodies going down, down, down mm -hmm. and, and really having this mindset thing working for you in the background. So what do you think, like, so you described it as a game changer. Mm -hmm. What was game changing about adding this mindset piece to the puzzle? How long have you got? <laughs> I got all day, sister. <laughs> I, I, I just can't, I, it was like, um, became like an addiction. Like I, I was looking, I looking forward to your Saturday calls, like so excited because I knew that each call I was going to have an aha moment and I was going to come away and Colm and I were going to sit down afterwards and he'd be saying, what did you learn? And I'd be like, oh, wow this and this and this and this so the and it was and it I just have to say it it was really powerful in itself just to speak li and listen to other women speaking who were very similar sort of type A people from all over the world going through similar things and you just not letting us get away with anything like calling our bullshit <laughs> <laughs> calling the narratives I warned you <laughs> <laughs> I warned you, Mr. Kate, I might call you out. But that was the coolest thing about you, though, is because you loved yourself and you love this dream enough to be willing to be called out on your bullshit. Yeah, I th I needed it so much. Um, you know, and it, it, listening to other women talk, I started hearing my thoughts you know you, you sort of you, it's very hard to hear what's going on in your own head sometimes but when you hear other women making excuses or beating themselves up or and you suddenly you want to sort of say no you know it's not like that and and then to hear <laughs> so it, it was really useful um so i think um okay key things for me uh i remember um you saying be a historian of your successes and not just your failures. That was a, a moment uh, where at some point, all you can see is what hasn't worked, what's gone wrong and where you've made mistakes or failed, inverted commas. And once I started working with you, I realized that um, it, although progress is not linear I had come so far from that woman who just came off the pill and like you know, in a physical way uh, my pain my periods were not painful anymore whereas they'd been painful I <laughs> could tell when my fertile window was without and needing any basal thermometer which <laughs> You're all, yeah. You had liberation from the basal body temperature. Exactly. Starting. You know, it was doing what it was supposed to be doing for the first time. Um, and so some of these thoughts that you have and you, you recognize where you say, well, if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. I'm running out of chances each month. You can completely reframe that and you can say, well, actually, I'm more fertile than I was then. And each month is another opportunity to work on my health and my well-being and my fertility. I'm getting closer to my baby each time. Uh, and that the, the hardest thing was the, un, the uncertainty of the timing. So I think I'd had to sort of give up the imagined time frame where I was trying to keep up with my friends and my family. Uh, and I had to say, all right, I'm running, running my own race. Um, I'm on my own journey. I've, I've had to deal with things that have set me on a different course, like potentially, you know, that working in that job with the stress of what happened with my mom, it, my, my immune system just went crazy. And actually I had to have, be, have to be quite compassionate uh, to myself for the, my poor body had not just previously I'd been thinking it's broken, but actually it was working 
completely perfectly because it was tr it was protecting me you know if I'd got pregnant it wouldn't have been a healthy pregnancy and by the time you know I I realized and I worked on myself um I that the the baby would help me healthier you know there'd be so many blessings to come out of it and I remember you saying um don't stop trying to think things are happening to you but maybe they're happening for you and for someone who's not religious or that spiritual had to really connect with that um and, and it, it's a sort of faith in uncertainty that's quite a hard concept but once you surrender to that and and it's it's that's the most empower, empowering moment because in that uncertainty is the possibility of change of something different it's not like the past is just a verdict and you can't move on from it you can't change anything uh you know one had said to me you know it would be different if you know your your tubes are blocked and you're never going to get pregnant that way you know there's there's certain medical things that do prevent someone from getting pregnant naturally, but they'd not found anything for me. It was all unexplained and wishy-washy. Um, and so instead of believing that it wouldn't happen, I decided to believe it might happen again. I'd found fate, a sort of confidence in myself again. Isn't that really funny? Because, yeah, I mean, it's like everyone freaks out about an unexplained diagnosis. But I always tell women that means anything is possible, like even the good shit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Wow. And and then um, it is so when you talk about surrendering to that uncertainty, that is it's quite you have to be quite fearless because um, you are saying I have this knowing that it's in my future, and I and I believe that I'm going to be a mum one way or the other but I can't control when that happens or how that happens. And that's, you know, <laughs> you have to be quite fearless to sort of let that go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it is the fearlessly fertile method. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that fearlessness is a fairly critical part. But you don't give up, that was the key thing. I always thought surrendering meant you did you had to not want it anymore or not try and get it anymore but actually it sort of meant the opposite working with you I sort of had the permission to dig in and commit to it uh to say no, this is I'm my husband and I are willing to do what it takes to get there and that takes the pressure off because one way or the other you know we we would open to surrogacy we were open to donor if we needed to but it you remember you sort of saw like one step at a time like you know don't kind of future trip you don't need that yet <laughs> you're still <laughs> way at the beginning of the journey i did get in there kate didn't i, I <laughs> you did you. like i hear it. <laughs> yeah and another one of your phrases was is that actually true for you that was a good one because uh Sometimes you say things, I would say things, uh, or other ladies would, and <laughs> you hold up. <laughs> like, is is that actually true, or have you just chosen to view it from a certain angle and, and tell yourself a narrative? And often, you know, something that's negative feels more credible or maybe more comfortable. And actually leaning into the discomfort or believing in something positive. <laughs> yeah. Can you As... imagine? Can you believe that? Isn't mm. that hilarious? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> and then with the gratitude stuff, um, I realized that I'd been using gratitude because I ha I, I am a positive person and and you know that's probably why it was quite difficult to to come to terms with infertility because I wasn't wallowing misery from the beginning uh, I certainly believed each month that next month's an opportunity and um but when I sort of said all the things I'm grateful for 
I was sort of using it to make me small. I was like diminishing what I wanted by saying what I had, what I had. Right. And I remember you saying, ask for what you want or more. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> I bet that totally offended your English sensibilities. Right? Yeah. Like- you were like, oh, I couldn't possibly do that. Like, <laughs> or more, like more than one child. <laughs> uh, but that was all about um, allowing myself to receive uh, and you know, um, it it was coming, I was coming from a deprivation mindset and not from an abundant mindset. And you sort of helped me realize that doing my gratitude each day. So I started, you know, every morning writing down things I was grateful for and not using those as as ways to keep me small um, and and sort of in a sort of self-judgment self-loathing way like right 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 yeah um but but sort of saying this is what's possible this is how good things can happen to me good things have happened to me and that was an aha moment when I realized some psych some sort of subconscious level I had had a very good life in London and everything was going well and then it was taken away with my mum passed, you know, in a, in a lot of ways. Um, everything changed very quickly. And it would, I had somehow computed if I have too much good in my life, bad things happen. And I had to unpick that with you mm. and, and accept that good things were possible and good things wouldn't necessarily lead to bad things. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. They're, and that's receiving. Well, yeah, definitely. And we sometimes get in this trap where we think that there is this, it, it's required that there's an even exchange that if I'm asking for this massive blessing of a baby, then it must come with equivalent misery, mm-hmm. right? It's this complete, um, it, it's, it, it's just put the struggle. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So something and I remember I mean you were always there Kate like right there ready to go paw up you know like (laughs) you you really it it doesn't surprise me that things turned out for you the way that they did because you were so in it to win it you were so in the game something rather miraculous happened for you very quickly can you share that because that's just I mean it blows my mind whenever I think about your story. Yeah, so um, I think it's important to say that there there was a sort of a, a blip in working with you in the middle um, before the good thing happened. I, I remember, so, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, so, so but, but I think it's important to say because um, it showed how far I'd come on the mindset path and it was a big dip so um we were working together and you sort of when I signed up with you I said you know I'm, I'm gonna go for another round of IVF it be it was the pandemic year so we'd had to take a break for it was 2020 we'd had to take a break while the clinics were closed um so we felt ready for another go at it and I had your you know your weekly calls and so I was in a really good place and that was a a completely different round of IVF as I said you know like we're 19 embryos and when I think we got 10 day five embryos so it was just it couldn't have gone better my lining was nice and thick for the first time you know and um all these changes (laughs) yeah so positive 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 and then they transferred to really perfect you know double a grade five uh embryos day five embryos and uh worked through the two-week wait with you um did everything and was feeling good and they didn't take i ended up with a negative pregnancy test uh which felt just so surprising well you know i I really thought it was going to work but that was the moment where you had where all the work we'd done mattered because like you say it's not linear there's it's not um 
it's not outcome based you know there's no if you do this you get that you, it's it's a journey and there were so many you know you taught me to celebrate the wins so there were so many things about that that should have been little victories little successes and were because they were so it was such a different round I was I was just in a different place and the outcome was was sort of irrelevant um because there was so much possibility for next time or the, and I remember you saying well okay you, so you so you didn't get pregnant this month but why wouldn't you get pregnant next month <laughs> I didn't really have an answer you know because yeah I was it was proven it was on paper that I was more fertile than I had been six months previously and then I had been six months previous to that so it was working with you I felt so much more resilient I was obviously heartbroken we both were but again your little phrase two things can be true at the same time <laughs> came into play uh so I I can made made space for both of them and you know it was inc I'm not going to pretend it wasn't incredibly hard it was a daily practice a daily choice right to to acknowledge the pain and not be a victim to it and it's it's you know something you're gonna have to work my whole life on to to, to manage that and um, because it is a skill but thank god I had you at my back while that was happening and at the same about a week after I found out we hadn't the, the two embryos hadn't taken my brother and his wife blessed them they had to call me off and tell me they were expecting twins <laughs> So, Ooh, thank God. so you were under attack, right? Thank, like, yeah, I was, was the universe of... was, was, you know, testing me really was testing. And oh, if I had, if that had happened a year previous, I'd been in, this, in an institution, I think. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was really hard. So they, um, yeah, so we, I at that point um we took stock Colm and I and we we went on a little staycation in Ireland and we you know we sat with the pain we cried we laughed we drank lots of wine we you know we we sort of um we were we we were open to other possibilities so we we actually um contacted a surrogate clinic surrogacy clinic <laughs> And we were talking to the doctors about more immune tests. Um, so we got, it, that was really powerful because um, it felt that there wasn't one option. There wasn't like this or nothing. It was right. this or everything. Like there were so many different paths. We had so many, we were so lucky and so fortunate to have the financial means and the space in our lives and the I was still young, I knew I was 34. There was so much still out there. It wasn't time to give up. And that's where, you know, you're saying hell yes, commit to the vision. What's your authentic intention? That is to have a baby and I'm <laughs> and I'm not giving up. I remember saying to my husband, the little mantra that you taught me, my name is Kate and I'm not leaving without my babies. <laughs> And I'm not, I'm, like, I'm not leaving without them. And he's like, no, neither am I. So that all said, um, that very next month, no medication, no IVF, got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> so just complete magic. <laughs> Great. Okay, see, this is so important because what you're teaching us right now is the past is no predictor of the future. Your current circumstances are not a verdict, nor are they going to be the thing, you know, that necessarily has to take away any of your dreams. Because no. think about it, in very short order, you went from two grade five, double A, sparkly, like mm -hmm. champion embryos that not working to getting 
pregnant naturally the which, next month <laughs> the very next month and how many weeks are you now 36 <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, but, but you like, know that was my first pos po first natural positive pregnancy test in four and a half years so it, it like there was no kind of logic to it except the only game changer was my mindset I mean it's it's crazy because you're living proof of what's possible when you just make a decision because if we if we trace like this progression in your life it truly was about making a decision that you weren't playing footsie with your dream mm -hmm. and you know there's something that you said before that i think is really powerful and i want to go back to because there's a tendency in us to say that if i am blessed in a bunch of different ways you know that i well you know things are so good for me like i you know i'm very grateful for having the means to do all this but if your mind wasn't right you might not have even seen that mm -mm. no and i i remember when when we first went for ivf in 2019 kind of feeling embarrassed to tell people because i thought you know um even I can't, it's hard to even put my mind back there, but sort of apologetic that we were, we were willing to spend this money on ourselves and on our dream when, you know, there's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to think back to because it seems with my current mindset, quite difficult to compute. Well, um, and thank God, with the, the, <laughs> I'm setting an intention. You will never go back to that bad neighborhood, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter how many blessings are in your life. If you don't use your mind right, you will miss them. Yeah. You, you will not be a good steward of the blessings in your life if you do not think like a woman who succeeds. You will shit all over those opportunities. And I think I, I really want to give you a lot of credit, Kate, because you could have just given up on that and said, hey, I'm just too blessed, you know, whatever. I should be ashamed of this. But look at what happened when you said, yes, and I want this and more. Yeah, absolutely. And that was something you've taught me, which I will carry through hopefully for life is you do not have to believe your thoughts. You do not have to uh, act on their thoughts. You just witness them. Uh, and then by the power of witnessing them, you can soften, let them go a lot more easily. And you can choose which narratives you listen to uh, and actively choose. You know, it's a daily choice of, okay, am I going to um, bully myself today or am I going to be kind to myself today? Yes. Uh, it's, <laughs> exactly. it's a choice. It's a choice. Yeah. Well, so what would you tell? the women listening so you know maybe there's a, a women out there listening to this that are saying you know i've failed too many times i've tried too many things they're nervous about this whole mindset thing they might be nervous about this pink-haired american yelling at them mm -hmm. lovingly like what mm -hmm. would you say to them what would you want them to know i think fear is very powerful uh and we've probably learnt narratives of listening to anxiety, doubt, worry, fear. And because they're negative, they feel more credible. Um, but they uh, they're not they're they're a form of control and, and it's the wrong form of control. Um, I think practicing choice to I remember my mantra and and it was my my hope is stronger than my fear and each my my personal experience was that I had never got pregnant in all that time except for that one IVF that went ended in miscarriage so the evidence suggested that I would never get pregnant you know if I was basing it on the past uh, and it took a huge amount of fearless 
darkness you know fearlessly fertile to to believe uh not to to trust not in in the doubt and the fear of what had gone but in what was possible and what was what was in the future and what there was this dynamic between my the knowing that I had that I was going to be a mother like I really I really felt that that some at some point in my life adoption surrogacy natural I didn't know but I knew that I was going to be a mother and there was that certainty which was counterbalanced by the uncertainty of when or how it would happen and that is it's so easy for the fear of to let that be a fear you know will it happen but if you have that knowing then it will happen you just don't have control over the outcome and that's the exciting bit that's the bit you taught us to kind of embrace oh my gosh a type a lovably (laughs) control freaky former attorney you know could embrace uncertainty Mm mm-hmm yeah, but with but that's the caveat with the certainty that you're not giving up. I know, and and some people reach the point in their journey when when they're ready or willing to change tact or you know. But even that, it's not giving up. It's changing priority, changing focus. You know that wow. that it's so different the way you you can reframe something. Uh, so for us, potentially at the beginning of our journey you know moving to surrogacy would have felt like giving up but by the time I I ended up with those two embryos that didn't take it didn't it felt empowering it felt like I was I was had an active role in what happened next and I was not just a victim of the outside world uh and I I wasn't a passenger I was I was in you call it um there was autopilot and then there was pilot and I and I think by the end I was in pilot mode but when I came to you I was very much autopilot right well very much so and but you are also a testament to the commitment that you have to your family and what a glorious origin story your children are going to have and and think about what you're going to be able to teach them and and how you won't be teaching them from platitudes, Kate. You're going to be teaching them by modeling it because you lived it and you know. Like that's, isn't that huge? It's huge. And, you know, I I mean, I'm just repeating back all your little phrases here. They've clearly gone in. But another one I remember you saying was the no's preparing you for the yeses. And there's no doubt, and it's not a cliche to say that the journey has been a blessing it you know it's not just putting a positive spin on it it really is saying I am a different person now I'm going to be a different mother I'm going to hopefully be a better mother and uh, you know I deal with all sorts of things life is throws challenges at you all the time and um you know you it's not about thinking positively it's thinking helpfully and you have an active choice every day on how you react or respond to what's thrown at you uh, and how you decide to to view it and frame it in your head and you I the only thing I'd say is I didn't think I realized until I met you how negative I had become I was a positive person by nature and this journey tested that and it's very easy to fall down a trap of limiting beliefs right right powerful well and and you're I mean I think the other thing that you're really teaching us here Kate is that it isn't just about being positive you know you know like that sort of cotton candy sort of Pollyanna positive yeah it's it's being making a decision about what you want being very clear about what you're going for and and saying look it doesn't matter what comes my way. I am on this track. It's a, it's actually about belief. I think it's something far more substantial than being positive. It's really about the way you think. It's it's thinking in a strategic, 
success oriented way that that causes your actions to change and therefore your results to change because think about it like if we take this full circle and we look at who you became mm -hmm. you became a woman who was smart enough to have a bump squad you had your functional medicine people you had your your nutritionist you mm -hmm. had me you had your regular physician you know your gp and specialist like you became a woman who was covering her bases and in order to facilitate her dream coming to pass yeah. like do you like the foundation yeah. of that is who you became and the way you think yeah and i think you gave me permission to to turn the volume up on that to um it wasn't like the further you got into it the smaller you had to become and uh the more sort of apologetic for keeping going when it was like well look the evidence suggests this isn't going to happen for you so you, you know call it quits it was you know every challenge i got sort of actually dug in more volume went up hell yes yeah you're, you're starting to talk like a crazy american i love it, I love it. <laughs> yeah exactly and that was i mean that was why you were the perfect coach for me because i needed someone he was just completely on the other spectrum to me you know i i was this kind of polite english rose <laughs> And oh you called God. my bullshit. <laughs> oh my gosh. And what an honor it was to be with you. Like, I just, I just, if I haven't told you lately, Kate, I love you. And I love, <laughs> and I just like, I love all of my ladies because it truly is an honor to stand shoulder to shoulder with a woman who's on a path to making her dreams come true. It truly is. I mean, you're, you know, as a former attorney, you know that nobody leaves the law unless this shit is a calling. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I feel incredibly privileged to have met you and to have worked with you. And I hope that I take some of the lessons you've taught me through to being a mother. Oh my goodness. Well, Kate, they're clear. The hooks are in you, girl. The hooks are in you. And thank you so much for sharing your truth sharing your story and uh you're going to be meeting this baby in a few weeks and so yeah. oh you got to make sure you send me a picture so thank you so much my darling what what a joy thank you it's been a real honor to be on love this episode of the fearlessly fertile podcast subscribe now and leave an awesome review remember the desire in your heart to be a mom is there because it was meant for you when it comes to your dreams keep saying hell yes